What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Brandon Coin YouTube channel. I hope everybody's having a great day. We're back out in the garage. In today's video, I'm adding another bit axe to the fleet. So this is a bit axe, not a Supra, not a Gamma, an Ultra. It's an older bit axe, older generation, uses an older ASIC chip, doesn't mine as efficiently, but you can still overclock them and you can still get some hash rate out of them. And I mean, People are hitting blocks over here on Bitcoin. So, I mean, it's it's my turn. I'm due, I'm due. Sound like a gambler. I'm due, I'm due. I've just been hitting the slot machine for a while. She's gonna come back around. She's gonna, it's gonna be my turn soon. So anyway, let's flip it around. Let me show you this Bitax Ultra and what I'm doing with it. And then we'll go on the computer and show you how it's doing. All right, guys, so here is the Bitax Ultra. It is actually a tiny chip hub version, so definitely gonna um give them a little shout out over on twitter and stuff they've been making some really good stuff for quite a while but as you can see right now i just connected to it and connected it to my pool um the way you connect and hook up any bit axe is super simple don't let these things be intimidating whenever you first plug them in uh they will say trying to connect to wi-fi if they can't connect to wi-fi themselves or they themselves will emit a Wi-Fi signal and it'll be like Bitax something. So what you do is you connect to it with your phone. Sorry about that, I had a phone call, but um, once you connect to them, uh, it will open up a page on your device. So whether it's on your phone or on your laptop or computer, um, you'll navigate to a um, an already designated IP address uh, and then it will uh, ask you for your Wi-Fi SSID and your password. Type those in, hit save, restart, then it'll boot you off of that Wi-Fi address and your Bitax will connect to your Wi-Fi. Then all you do is go up to your Bitax and look for its IP address, which it'll rotate around on the screen. Give it a second. Give it another second. There we go, see 192.168.12.246. So you do need to put the periods in there um, you go to your computer or go to your uh, device of choice, type that IP address in, and then it will give you uh, the actual settings and everything to um, put your pool information in and put your, and if you want to start overclocking it. So I'm going to go show you what that looks like inside and shout out to avoid bit. He is actually the one that makes these frames. And if you want one of these, he also makes one that goes into a server rack. I'm actually going to be filling that one out too but um i have a link down below and a discount code that i believe i think it's either five or ten percent it is significant um so if you want to get yours and get your bit axes all set up and stuff and you can lock them down or i have mine loose so i can like slide them over um yeah yeah i need to get some more of these 90 degree plugs because these take up so much room and then i could get them tighter together so like like that that's not bad but like that one, and then this one, I can't really, you know, like this, hold on, let's see here. Like that's as close as I can really get without bending that plug. So we, we got a lot of a lot of real estate to, to take up. But anyway, that's for another video. So let's go inside and let's get this thing tuned up because we can definitely do some more hash rate than what it's doing right now at factory. All right, guys, now we're inside and we just navigated to the IP address on a computer that's also on that network. Uh, it's showing average at 432 giga hash. If we go over to um, settings, you can see it's on default frequencies, which is 485 and then 1200 on the core voltage. We'll go ahead and bump that up to 1250 and we'll bump this frequency all the way to 575 and we'll do a save and a restart. See if we, uh, if we can't pull that hash rate up. From what I looked at online, these things are pretty solid to go uh, in the uh, mid to low 500 giga hash range without any aftermarket support. So we're definitely going to keep, uh, keep an eye on it. And uh, we might end up needing to add some of the little heat sinks. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if these models suffer from the same uh, overheating issue um, as the Gammas do. But look at that. Oh, 600, 800. Yeah, it's jumping around. We'll definitely let this uh, level off uh, for a little bit. And it seems like every time I restart it, it gets uh some bad shares right in the beginning and then they calm down so 
Don't be worried about bad shares right off the bat. All right, guys, and then jumping over to BitcoinMerch.com. This is where I got mine. And yeah, this is the Bitax Ultra 1366. Um, so oddly enough, this is not the exact model that they sent me. They sent me one from Tiny Chip Hub. So I don't know if you're going to get this model or if I maybe I got a newer one or I got an older one. But I would imagine that since it's the same ASIC chip, you're going to end up with the same performance and it's going to be the same setup. It looks identical other than this silk screening right here. That's a little bit different. Um, now, right now, they're $10 off. They're $99 or $84 if you're a member over at Bitcoin Merch. And then I do have a discount code that gets, uh, I think it's 4% off. So I'll put that discount code about down below. If you use it, I appreciate it. Um, other than that, guys, uh, let's go back and see how it's doing. So average is at 520 giga hash right now. Um, our unknown or bad shares are at 38%. So they were at 50% and they're dropping. So I'm going to let this run for a little while and we'll check back in and uh, see how she's doing you know, maybe in an hour or two. All right, guys, as for temperatures, we're at 66 degrees Celsius. The fan is pinned at 100%. So I have it targeting 60 degrees Celsius. Um, so it looks like, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely, we're pushing her a little bit. Power is at 18 watts. Input voltage at 4.9 volts. Not great. Um, really, these, these bit axes definitely like to stay right around that 5 volts. It drops much below 4.9 and you'll end up with errors. So... Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll see how this power supply will hold up as well. Anyway, guys, be back in a little bit. Right, guys, so I came back and I have the Bitax has overheated C settings and it's hashing at a really low rate. Um, so if we go over to the, uh, settings, it, whenever your Bitax overheats or gets too hot, it will clock it all the way down to like 50 and a thousand. So since this thing is not running stable, at uh, an increased hash rate or an increased core clock. We're just gonna set it to the defaults, uh, disable overheat mode and then save and restart. Uh, this one back uh, to stock, sorry, I got a phone call as soon as I start recording. Um, and we'll put this one on the list to get some aftermarket modifications. So uh, a bigger cooler, um, bigger fan, cause it's got a little tiny fan on it. Also put the heat sinks um, on the uh, PCB where the, uh, the, the voltage regulator is um, and see if we can't squeeze some more performance while also keeping it cooler. Um, but anyway, you guys, I wanted to thank y'all for coming out. Really do appreciate it. If you wanna grab one of these, uh, you can jump on over to the link down below in the description. Make sure to use my discount code at checkout and then if you want to uh, do some solo mining, you guys are welcome to join us at btc.jellyfc.com. That is our solo Bitcoin mining pool. And we have multiple ports. We have 300 miners connected. That's actually, I think that's the most we've had so far. Uh, we have 83 terahash online. And if you go to the connect page, we have ports for uh, nerd miners, uh, large ASICs, bid axes. And then if you wanted to do high difficulty rentals. so different ports to connect for basically anything. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to jump off here. I wish you guys a good, happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you on the flip side. Adios.